very lovely evening to you. Thanks for joining us on News at 6 here on Super Screen Television. I am Precious Amai. We begin now with a report that the Senate has urged the federal government to investigate the circumstances surrounding the death of the former Chief of Defense Staff Alex Bader on Tuesday, 18th of December. This resolution was reached after Senator representing Adamawa North Binka Garuba sponsored the motion during plenary today. The Senate notes with grief the demise of Alex Sambudu Bade, the former Chief of Defense Staff, on Tuesday, the 18th, December 2018. Also know that the late Alex Sambudu Bade was born in victim, a little town in movie local government areas of Adama State. Reacting on the matter, other senators took turns to support the motion and stressed the need to investigate unresolved cases of high-profile high murders. Alex Badi will go down in history as one who has failed to the gunshots of murderers in broad daylight a few kilometers away from our capital city. The lessons and the message of his death is that there is a failure of duty to protect. The state has failed Alex Badi, and the need for the state, the government, and the nation as a whole to take issues of security very seriously. If you go to chapter 4 of the Constitution, the first right there is right to life. So we take it seriously. And we must be seen to be taking it seriously. So I want to appeal to authorities to ensure that they get to the root of this matter and find the killers of this gentleman. A man who has served this country so well. I think that we must wait to ensure that the security agencies fish out those who are responsible for this moment, and also as those of his personal staff that are still being helped. All efforts must be made to see that they are rescued, and all efforts must be made that they do fish out. And on the bigger picture, I think definitely we still need to do more on the issue of security, particularly as you see, even getting closer to the capital. I think there is need for the security agencies to really rise above the level of performance now and ensure that we provide better security in the country. But in deliberation, the lawmakers observed a minute of silence in honor of the deceased. And still on Alex Badi's demise, more reactions have continued to trail the death of former Chief of Defense Staff Alex Badi, who was shot dead on 18th December. In an interview with Super Screen News, legal pra a legal practitioner and security expert, Wilson A. Sangbedu, condemned the killing calling on government to carry out a thorough investigation to bring the perpetrators to book. The death of, of um, the former chief of defense staff, is, um, it doesn't speak well of us as a, a nation. And uh, it, will have, it could have a very frightening dimension. Because if I'm an investor coming in from the U.S. and I want to come and invest in Nigeria, I'll take my money back. Because if someone on that level can be can be, can be assass 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 assassinated in cold blood, then someone like me who is coming with money from the U.S., what guarantee is it that I'm likely to survive if I become a, a target? So that's a big question. And it's not something the government of the day should just um, um, sweep over the, the carpet. That, that shows there's something wrong with the security architecture we have in our country. Legal practitioner also dispelled rumors making rounds about the death of the former chief of defense staff, advising Nigerians to ensure they have adequate information to back their claims. I would just like to see it as mere speculation. The question is, what evidence? Where is the evidence? Is it available? You know. So, um, if the former chief of defense staff, Alex Abade, had access to to that evidence and he kept it kept it to to, to to himself and did not release it i mean it's not something you and i can speculate on 
The Senate has confirmed the nomination of Justice Owani Aba Aji as Justice of the Supreme Court, as well as Bolaji Owonsoye as Chairman of the Independent Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offenses Commission. Also confirmed were Grace Chinda Okolo Titus, Obiara Igwedebia, Olubukola Balogun, Adamu Bello, and three others as members of the ICPC board. You recall that their confirmation was initially suspended after some lawmakers observed that the composition of the board did not comply with federal character principle. And still at the National Assembly, Senate President Bukola Saraki has sued workers of the National Assembly for embarking on an industrial action over unpaid allowances. In an expert motion issued by the National Industrial Court of Nigeria and Abuja, which was signed by the Assistant Chief Registrar, Hawa Yakubu, the Senate President and Speaker of the House of Representatives, Yakubu Dugara, sought a restraining order stopping the workers under the Parliamentary Staff Association of Nigeria, PASAN, from proceeding on strike. You will recall that the Parliamentary Staff Association of Nigeria, PASAN, in the National Assembly on Monday, embarked on a four-day warning strike over unpaid allowances to the tune of 2.7 billion naira. And ahead of the Lagos state election, the gubernatorial candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in Lagos State, Jimmy Agbaje, says the party will produce the next governor of the state. Speaking at the defection of over 20,000 members of the All Progressives Congress to a court party, Agbaje said his adoption as the consensus candidate will spell doom for the ruling party. Mike Osemeke now reports. Over 20,000 members of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Lagos State, defected to a court party with great expectation for a desired change. In the same vein, a court party members endorsed the People's Democratic Party, PDP's Jimmy Agbaje, as their consensus candidate. With all humility, this honor that you have granted to us, this position that you have endorsed us for, that we accept it on behalf of myself and myself. And we want to assure you that the way we have made this possible, in a very easy way, so shall we make our victory very easy. Amen. Some of the defectors were quick to speak on the rationale behind their decision. You will still recollect in just about two months ago, we did primaries. We did the Lega Kangaroo primaries. We participated in all those primaries. All the candidates sitting there participated, paid money for nominations, and they were deprived to be in the primaries, including our Hebu and Dynamic Excellency Abode. May he live long. It has never happened in the history of Lagos State whereby a governor will serve a term and you will say he cannot go for second term. Very significant members of the APC, they, they come to a court party today. And you see the large crowds. These are grassroots mobilizers, over 20,000 people. And these are workers on the ground. Now, the second thing that happened was that having become from APC to the P um, from APC to a court party, the governorship candidate of the accord party also stepped down. And the third thing that happened is that Mr. Chimiagaje of the PDP was endorsed unanimously by those who have become from APC to a court. So what uh, what is happening now is that a court has a governorship candidate. And the name of the governorship candidate is Mr. Jimmy Agbaje, the candidate of the PDP. It remains to be seen where the pendulum swings in 2019 because other parties are likely to tell the same story of party members defecting to theirs. Mike Osemeke reporting for Super Screen News. Away from that report now to the 2018 Christmas celebration, the federal government has declared Tuesday, December 25th and Wednesday, December 26, 2018 and, and Tuesday, January 1st, 2019 as public holidays to mark the Christmas, Boxing Day and New Year celebrations. The Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Abdurrahman Dambazao, made a declaration on behalf of the federal government in Abuja. 
the Director of Press Ministry of Interior, Mohamed Manga, in a statement said the minister enjoined all Christian faithful and Nigerians to use the period to pray earnestly for the betterment and development of Nigeria. In the spirit of the season, he called on Nigerians to strengthen their resolve to maintain peace and unity in the country before, during and after the general elections. And ahead of 2019, the Allied People's Movement, APM, has adopted President Muhammad Buhari as its presidential candidate for the 2019 general election. National chairman of the APM, Yusuf Dantale, at the launch of the party's campaign in Ogun State, presented the party's flag to pres President Muhammad Buhari, who was represented by the APM governorship candidate in the state, Adekunle Akinlade, congratulated the people of Ogun State for standing against injustice. Akinlade, in his response, thanked the APM chairman and assured him that he would deliver the flag to the state chairman of the All Progressive Congress, APC, and the Ogun State governor, Ibinkule Amosu, as adopted presidential flag bearer. Global human rights organization Amnesty International has been accused of spreading false information and fomenting trouble in Nigeria through its constant unfounded reports on crisis in the country. A group, the Middle Belt Conscience Guard, that disclosed this said it is, it is worried over the recent report released by the organization which claims a harvest of death in Nigeria after persistent clashes between herders and farmers in the country. Spokesperson of the group, Onoja Ugu, told journalists that reports issued by the Amnesty International includes old picture and interviews. What Amnesty International has done is worse than the actual farmer's headers crisis, which is to cause the warring parties to resume hostilities and escalate the killings. We have genuine concerns that the people will resume murdering each other in response to the Amnesty International's report. It is on this note that we categorically state that we shall hold Amnesty International responsible for any resumption of the farmers' headers crisis, same as we hold it liable for any reprisal that takes place in the aftermath of the, pub of this, of the publication. We will not watch helplessly while they destroy our country and run back to enjoy the blood money they have been paid to cause damage to Nigeria. We have accepted that Amnesty International is the listed terrorist group operating in Nigeria, harassing the government and law-abiding citizens with its con contrived crisis. Let this international NGO know that Nigerians are not helpless. You recall that Amnesty International had in his report claimed that more than 3,600 people have been killed in clashes between farmers and herders in Nigeria since 2016, saying the Nigerian government has displayed gross incompetence. And now on traffic laws, Lagos residents have been reacting to the recent order given by Governor Akiwumi Ambadi on the immediate implementation of the state traffic laws. In an interview with Super Screen's Blessed Omonose, the respondents expressed reservations on the ability of the law enforcement officers to act in accordance to the directive. The report. Reactions have continued to trail the directive given by the Lagos State Governor Akiwumi Ambode that the Lagos State Traffic Management Agency LASMA begins prosecution of traffic offenders in the state. You will recall that this directive was occasioned by the death of one LASMA official, Adeyemi Rotimi, who was reportedly shot by an operative of Federal SARS for driving against traffic. Reacting to this development, these Lagos residents say the order to implement traffic offenders law is a welcome development. Ah, indeed they are trying, they are really trying. Lagos roads are, I mean, you can easily, they, they are free, they are traffic free because the last mile officials are doing what they are supposed to be doing because an average motorist on Lagos roads is somehow, um, should I say, wants to be 
wants to circumvent the law. The, the last man guys are not empowered. How much are they paid? They are paid 10,000. So what normally happens, they are looking at their own personal games instead of doing their primary responsibilities. Normally, women being are very stubborn. Without the law, you cannot regulate things. Listen, for instance, look at this uh, Pretend Bridge. I see no reason some government build this. A woman be starting to risk his life. So if it is my brother, whosoever, call him. Call him what you wanted to call it so that he would learn his own lesson. Drivers, the way they are behaving on the road, so definitely that one now let people to caution themselves. Uh, all these last month too, and they are not doing their work exactly the way they are supposed to do it, simply because of the money they are collecting from people. So definitely we need something that you know make people to, to realize that what they are doing is bad. On his part, the chairman of LASMA, Chris Olakwe, in an exclusive interview with Superscreen said they are more committed to implement the governor's order, especially as the festive period approaches. I, I must tell you that we have been carrying out a lot of enforcement. This is just another motivation from His Excellency. When a death occurs in such a premeditated, unpremeditated circumstance, uh, there will be demotivation, there will be loss of um, interest and fear of the unknown. So that clarion call from His Excellency was a call to duty, devotion, and um, for us not to rest in spite of the challenges. We had set up on, on coming on board the surveillance squad of LASMA, I set it up myself, and we have men who are going around to see their conduct is uniform and within rules and regulation. Persistent gridlock is an identification of Lagos State, and to ease the burden on residents, all hands must be on deck to assist all traffic officers, who must also cooperate with one another to achieve the desired result of a free flow of traffic. Blessed Omonose. Reporting for Super Screen News. And now on national security, the Nigerian army says the troops of Operation Lafayette Dole have apprehended two female suicide bombers at Mushemiri village in Konduga local government area of Borono State. The army, who made the disclosure via its official Twitter page, said a suspected suicide bomber and her accomplice were arrested on Wednesday night while attempting to infiltrate the 222 battalion defensive locations. It also said the improvised explosive devices, IED vest, strapped to her body was diffused, adding that investigation is still in progress. You're still watching News at 6 here on Super Screen Television. We'll take a break now and we'll return with business reports. Do stay with us. back many thanks for staying with us now on business and in the aviation sector president muhammad buhari has commissioned the newly built international terminal at the unamdi azikiwe international airport abuja the terminal is said to be the biggest in west africa and it has the capacity to process at least 15 million passengers annually it is also one out of the four being built by a 500 million dollars loan facility from China Exim Bank with a $100 million counterpart funding from Nigeria. While commissioning the facility, the president said the federal government was committed to making Nigeria an aviation hub. He also said Nigeria is making huge successes in infrastructure development, adding that he was happy about the progress made in infrastructure development in the maritime sector. And away from the aviation sector, the National Bureau of Statistics, NBS, has reported that the number of unemployed Nigerians rose from 17.6 million to 20.9 million from the fourth quarter of 2017 to the third quarter of 2018. The unemployment report shows that Nigeria's working age population, being people aged 15 to 64 years, increased from 111.1 million to 115.5 million. 
Analysis of the report showed that the total number of people in unemployment increased from 68.4 million in third quarter 2015 to 68.72 million in third quarter 2016 to 69.09 million in third quarter 2017 and 69.54 million in third quarter 2018. Away from unemployment figures now to the maritime sector, the Nigerian Port Authority, NPA, says it will take the necessary steps to curb the untold hardship being faced by port users due to the burden of congestion. NPA Managing Director Hadisa Bala Usman, who gave the promise while speaking with journalists in Lagos, said the authority is determined to especially curb traffic, among other things. Bala Usman, while reading out reform measures by the organization, also said it would take immediate effort to halt loss of investment capital and man R. She, however, urged the terminal operators to negotiate and grant waivers to consignees to facilitate the evacuation of the cargoes and mitigate against auctioning. And on the U.S. economy, defying calls by President Donald Trump to hold interest rates steady, the United States U.S. Central Bank, the Federal Reserve, raised its benchmark.